So I started, um, oh, my phone's just going off. Um, I started in 2019. Was that a uh, Shopify shopping. notification? Yeah, there was another That's sale perfect. coming through. <laughs> <laughs> um, love that sound. Having print on demand, like actually doing what you know you love. Like I'm, I chose a niche that I truly love. So actually working on it and then getting to design it and then just you feel so much more a part of the business. I feel like there's something there for me. I don't want to give up yet. And then I discovered your video where you did the step-by-step uh, -step video of like getting your store set up. And I was like, you know, I'm going to give this one last try. Like there's a step-by-step -step video, how like it doesn't get easier than that. So I tried it out and I got my first sale. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, there's something here. All right, we are here with Anita. Anita, for anybody who doesn't know, is one of the most successful students inside of WeScale. She's been with us since, wait, what month, reminded me, did you join? February. February, so February, so we're coming up on about six months, about mm -hmm. maybe five and a half-ish. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Anita. Happy to have you here. And I would love to just dive right in with uh, hearing a little bit about, if you wouldn't mind sharing about like your backstory and like what brought you to like print on demand. Like you mentioned just before we went live about drop shipping, just all of that. So I started, um, oh, my phone's just going off. Um, I started in 2019. Was that a uh, Shopify shipping. notification? Yeah, there was another That's sale perfect. coming through. <laughs> um, love that sound. Um, I started in 2019 drop shipping. Um, I actually bought a course. It was some Instagram guy selling a course mentorship spent like two grand on that when I didn't have the money at the time to spend it. And, you know, nothing happened. I uh, tried that out for like, I believe it was like a year and no sales. So of course I went back to the same route, getting another mentor courses all the way up till I think it was 2024. And then I just, you know, I, I put a pause. I, I gave up on drop shipping. And then I was actually going through YouTube one day and I saw Alec, he does the Etsy uh, print on demand. And then that's mm -hmm. what kind of got me into print on demand really. So I tried that out and then Etsy banned me immediately. Oh. So then I was like, I gave up again. And then um, I was like, you know what? I need to try one more time. I really like, I feel like there's something there for me. I don't want to give up yet. And then I discovered your video where you did the step-by-step uh, -step video of like mm -hmm. getting your store set up. And I was like, you know, I'm going to give this one last try. Like there's a step-by-step -step video, how like, it doesn't get easier than that. So I tried it out and I got my first sale. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, there's something here. So, and then I joined the community. And then, as you know, I, I bugged you and Meg to review my store. Cause I was like, I'm no, not you, giving up. Like, I, no, you yeah. were, you were like the star student. Everybody who's listening, like Anita's about to lay out a great roadmap, but because bring us forward to present day real quick, you just told us how many sales did you just hit recently? 400. That's amazing. Congratulations and amazing accomplishment, especially doing it. I think what's most remarkable is how many times you were able to push through, like having like tried it out, gotten your hopes up and like put in a lot of effort, I'm sure. And then just have things not pan out. I think there's so much value in just hearing more about that story. So I'd like to go back to when you talked about drop shipping and like you bought the course and then not our course. We don't have a course just for everybody listening. <laughs> Another course. And you invested money that, and I've been there, like money that I didn't have, like laid it all on the line. What was that feeling like for you? Like as you invested those last dollars and like, we're just basically riding on a hope and a prayer. In the beginning, I was excited because I was like, you know, they sell you this dream of you're going to make money right away. It's easy. So I got into it thinking it was easy. I remember spending like days building my store and everything. And then after that, I'm just like, okay, what's next? So then I would just wait for the sales and they would never come. And then, you know, some mentors that I invested into, they actually go ghost on you. So that was pretty sad that, you know, you invest so much money and they ghost you. So then, you know, the motivation slowly dies out. I know, I remember there was a few days where I just wanted to quit. I really mm -hmm. tried to push through, but, you know, I had my moments. I mean, I feel like we've all been there. When uh, you invest into a course, you get super excited and then it doesn't go out how you want. You know, you join a community and it's not what you thought it was. I mean, I've, I've bought so many courses, so I have so many stories to share of what I've been through. But, you know, I'm so grateful to be where I am now because like if you would have told me like years ago that I would have hit 400 sales, I don't know if I would have believed that, to be honest. 
I know. Yeah. It, it's like such like you have such an amazing journey that you've gone on and what it, bringing it back again to like, so what was it really that like, so you said you found like the Alec video and then you're like, all right, one, one last chance. Then you found like the step-by-step -step tutorial. What was that journey? What, did it feel any different like going through it this time? Like, was there any thing that like clicked more or any, anything of that sort? Well, to be honest, when I discovered dropshipping in 2019, it like lit some, fired me. I was like, I want to be my own like business owner. I want to be yeah. working for myself. So every time it was dying out because these courses weren't going how I wanted to, I would, you know, take like a couple months off and give up. But then I discovered like Alec, for example, he did, he was talking a different business model. It was still on shop. Uh, no, it was Etsy. So I was like, okay, let me try something else. Maybe I just need to do something else away from Shopify. I tried it and I actually, I remember I would wake up and the first thing I would do is open my laptop and upload designs. And what I like mm. about print on demand, you're actually way more in control than drop shipping. Drop shipping, yeah. you have to like pick a product and then you just have to market it. Meanwhile, with print on demand, you actually control the whole business. You get to create the designs, you're more in control. And it just, I, that, that's something else. I really like that it sparked something in me that I didn't have with drop shipping. So when I tried that, I, I uploaded like a hundred designs in like two days on Etsy, worked very hard day and night, and then they closed down my store. And then I just remember being like, well, what do I do now? Like, you know, I remember just feeling very like, okay, maybe this is not for me. And then I don't know, sometimes I would just go on YouTube and then just start looking again. And then I saw your video and I'm like, okay, I need to try one more time. And do, cause you mentioned Shopify and I'm like, you know, I've been on Shopify since 2019, I'm like, I need to do this one more last time, try the print on demand, but on Shopify and just try one more time. And um, no, I was so dedicated to do it. I was actually sick when I discovered your video. So I was off from work for a week. I was sick, like really badly at home with a fever. And I was like, well, this is my time to like work on the checklist like it's a sign. and upload. And I just put the like time in that whole week, just uploading while well, I was not feeling well. <laughs> then you you grinded through and it paid off clearly yeah and, and i'm curious and then, if it, the uh the piece you mentioned about how like drop shipping and I, I i totally identify with this but like drop shipping versus print on demand it feels you mentioned like it felt a little bit different to you i'm curious if you could yeah. expand on that yeah so like with drop shipping i feel like they just tell you to find a product and market it but then you don't feel too connected with the products you know you just look and then you also have to find a product that is selling so it's just like it's this complex like i don't even know how to describe it, but it was just very complex finding products i was just, just picking anything i remember i had like the blender the smoothie blender whatever it was mm -hmm. just trying to yeah. market it but then it's just your heart's not in it you know like you're just you're doing it because that's what works but i just find like my motivation wasn't there but having print on demand, like actually doing what, you know, you love, like I'm, I chose a niche that I truly love. So actually working on it and then getting to design it. And then just, you feel so much more a part of the business. It's fun to do. I like, like I get excited to wake up and work on it. It's just, it's different. It's very different, like drop shipping and print on demand. So I, I just now seeing it, I can see how print on demand is actually, I kind of want to say it's a bit easier to get into. Like, Cause you have full, like you have way more control than drop shipping. You're just throwing money at a product product and hope it works. Meanwhile, with print on demand, you actually have more control cause it's, you have control of what the product is. So, yeah. And you're able to like create your own demand in a way by like coming up yeah. with new and unique things. Exactly. Like you went through the course and then in that period, but before joining the community, what was that process like as you're like building your first designs, designing your first designs, building your first store? What was that process like for you? It was actually kind of exciting because I did the first print on demand experience on Etsy. So I was kind of familiar with the making design. So doing it on Shopify, I was kind of relieved because I truly like Shopify more than Etsy. So it was quite nice. And then the checklist was actually super handy to do. So I was just going through it and it was actually pretty nice just it was actually also my first time really building a store. Like when I was in drop shipping, I would pay most of the time, just do the shortcuts as you would yeah. in drop shipping. So on print and demand, I actually took the time and built my own store. So that actually kind of made it more sentimental for me. I'm like, I built this, I built the design, I built the store, I built everything. So I was more kind of attached to the store. So that's why I didn't want to let go to like so early. I was just like, no, I need to make this work. I put like sweat, blood and tears into this store. Right. So I wanted it to work. 
And then something a lot of people that we've heard they come up against is that they go through that process of like they put in so much effort and like love and pride into their their designs and their store and the brand that they're building. And it's super exciting. But then there's like the jumping off point, like the point mm -hmm. of like actually launching even before you launch. It's kind of gets scary just knowing that it's coming and knowing that like, OK, this is going to be like ripping off the band aid. Like, I'm curious if you could speak mm -hmm. to that at all, like what that pro like what that build up was like to you. And if you had any like butterflies about it or any of this thing of the sort. Um, I was actually really excited because I was watching your ad <laughs> okay. video and I just I guess I was so into like watching the step by steps that I was just like, OK, this is the next step. This is what I need to do next. And then I just like pushed it off. But then I guess I when I didn't see the sales coming in. That's when my motivation was slowly going back. I'm like, okay, is this not working? Is this because of me? And what I learned is don't be afraid to ask for help. Like I was so scared to message you guys because no one's done it. I saw like in the community, when I joined the community, um, no one was asking about their store. No one was sharing their store. But I was like, I need to ask because I'm like, I put so much work into the store. I don't want to give up. Like I really want this to work. So like, I think the best thing is just don't give up. And it's that's why it's also important to pick a niche that you love because then it's just like you're so attached to the store like that's why you can't just pick any niche i think you really have to love what you picked and what you do for it to work right and i remember that you you were kind of like the the icebreaker in the group like you were one of the very first ones like posting and getting feedback and i think like it was to your point like it just showed how passionate you were about it that you were like maybe in other circumstances i might be more shy or something but in this like screw it like i'm making this thing work and i'm curious like what was it like maybe it's just your default personality but what was it that like just motivated you like come hell or high water like i'm gonna make this work because this was my like last attempt to make this work because i said after this if this is not working i'm done with shopify i'm done with all of this like i'm I'm taking a break. It's not for me. So that's why I was like, I need once I got that first sale, I think that's what also got me motivated. But also like, yeah, I think it was my last moment to make it work. So I'm like and just having the community, having you guys there and just seeing that I can message you guys. I was like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to try it. So I uh, yeah, I just tried it out to see if I can get a reply. And then Meg replied right away that she's like, we're going to look into this. And I was like, oh, this is nice. I was like. And but I was a bit shy about having my store, you know, being shown to everyone. I'm not going to lie. I was a bit shy, but I was like, if if this helps other people, well, especially coming from drop shipping, Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You usually don't share your store with other people. And I actually have never shown my store to other people in drop shipping. Like I never asked for help. Actually, this was the first time I was like, no, I need to make this work. So it's it's yeah. Yeah. I guess you really got to just have that fire in you to make it work. Yeah, I'm just like cheesing so hard listening to you. I need to remember to like ask questions. So this is your story is awesome. Um, and I guess so like once you got into the you said you spent a little bit on ads, you're experimenting mm -hmm. um, and didn't get like, at least from my experience, like building a brand new store and then launching ads and not getting sales right away can kind of feel like a punch to the gut. Even if we logically know like it shouldn't like it's not going to like statistically, it's just not going to work right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. It's going to take refining and stuff. Even logically knowing that it can still feel like kind of a, I don't know, a big damper in a way. How did you I mean, it sounds like you're, you were just like powering through it. But I'm curious if you could speak to like how you push through that. Maybe like if you picture like on the first day after you wake up, you launched ads, you wake up excited, go to your laptop. You're like, oh, did I get any sales? See, not a five row as probably. Mm -hmm. what, what was that? experience like for you i guess it is a bit disheartening not seeing you know the sales come in but i'm used to not having sales so i was like this is nothing new i don't know how the kaching sounds like so i was just like <laughs> i need to make this work so i just pushed through it and honestly i just stopped checking i was like i just put money into it and i was like this is my last moment i need to make this work i followed your checklist and i'm like it needs to work like the, it needs to work i don't know because I was just looking into more print on demand and I'm like, it seems more promising than drop shipping. So I was like, I think this is going to work. I like and I did the method of checking a competitor. So I'm like, if they're selling, I should sell, too. So the fact that I got a sale is actually wild to me because I was using the Printify mockups. So I think that's actually oh, wild. Yeah. yeah. So when you first reviewed my <laughs> store, that was the I was using my Printify mockups. I didn't even know what I was doing, but yeah, just I guess I just stopped checking. Like I guess that fire was still lit in me. I like I needed this to work. 
I mean, if I didn't get my sale after a month, then I think I'd be a little disheartened. But the fact, like, I guess when you're not seeing sales, you just kind of wonder, like, what do I do? So the fact yeah. that I was able to ask somebody, I'm very grateful for. I guess some people might run to YouTube and be like, how to get better ads or better sales. I don't know. <laughs> So a couple of things I heard you say on in there that I think are important is that one, you had like, it sounds like you had a set amount of money that you like had like earmarked as like, all right, this is my investment money. Mm -hmm. And it was money that you were like kind of setting aside that like, this is going into the business, like just put it out of my head, like what happens to it? Uh, was that the first thing you mentioned? Yeah, I just had some money to be honest. Like I didn't have that much to be spending on drop shipping, but I honestly just put on my credit card and I'm like, I'm just going to gamble yeah, and just but like any, any amount that you're just like, in, even if it's just like a hundred bucks, yeah. it's like in my head, like that's oh, yeah. gone, like just setting it aside. And then the, the second thing I heard was that like, as you were thinking about the process of like setting up your, you sound like you were like very logical about it and like very sequenced in how you were thinking. You're like, I do this and then I do that. And I, anything that's down there, I know it's there, but I don't even worry about it right now. Like that's yeah. just for you know, need it down the road. Is that how you were thinking through those things? Yeah. And I honestly, because of the checklist, to be honest, because there's steps laid out. <laughs> so I, I was just following the checklist. I'm new to print on demand. So I was just like, okay, the store is done. Okay, the store is done. That's out of my mind. And then like, once I finished the checklist, it was ads. So then, okay, my focus was on ads and ads only. And I was just following that video. Yeah. and But then something amazing that you did was that you got one, you were relentless in a very positive way in getting mm -hmm. feedback. Like I think I wish everybody would do that. You, But then you got the feedback and then you like immediately implemented it mm -hmm. so much so that to the point that when we finally got on the one on one call, like which couldn't have been like much more than a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like It was pretty it wasn't months. It was a couple of weeks like you already had you had implemented all the changes mm -hmm. and then you had already started seeing like positive traction yeah after you and, and that was because like you did the, uh, or maybe you just want to run us through like a couple of the quick things that you had done yeah so as soon as i got the feedback i mean to be honest i'm somebody who doesn't like being like getting critiqued in front of everybody i'm very shy so just get watching that video was very hard to be honest being critiqued and knowing everybody's watching seeing how i did but I right away took notes and I'm like, I need to make the change now because my ads, I wanted results right away because I mean, when you're running ads, you're losing money every day. So I was like, I need to implement this right now to make up for lost time. So yeah, I changed everything. I had to redo all my designs. So I deleted everything and re-uploaded everything to change the mock-ups, change everything. And uh, I started seeing sales. And then that's when I knew I was like, okay, they know what they're doing. I need to, I need to listen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just took it with that. And I actually learned like I shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. So then I just all the time would ask for help in the community. I wasn't afraid to because I was like, it works. When you ask for help, it genuinely works. Like, don't be afraid to put yeah. yourself out there. And what's really remarkable about that is that like a lot of people, they have the same feeling that you do. Like they're afraid of putting themselves like under mm -hmm. totally understandably like of putting ourselves out there, taking in that feedback, especially publicly. That takes a lot of bravery. Mm -hmm. And like it's one thing alone just to ask for it. Like that's huge. But then two, to be able to, to take it and like set our ego aside to like actually receive the feedback mm -hmm. and like care more about the end result than like protecting our, our own ego. So what was it like in your, your mindset that you think that allowed you to do that? I think it was actually something you said about designs. Um, when I first started my store, I made the designs all myself without doing too much market mm. research. And I think I got so obsessed with the designs, I took it personally. And in one of your videos, you said, like, it's not about you or the designs you made. It's about what the market wants. And I was like, then I took a step back and I realized it's not about me. This I don't get to like do whatever I want. Basically, it's about the market. So then that's when I think my mindset changed. It's not about me. Nothing's personal. It's purely the market. And that's what I'm seeing with my store now. I completely changed that. And I just simply sell designs that the market likes. I mean, I still make some of my designs that I think would be cool. But it's I think that's what it truly is. You just can't take anything personally with this. It's not about you. It's about what the market wants. And then you are going to see success, obviously. Yeah. And, and was there like a, a tipping point or like a watershed moment for you where it shifted in your mindset from like caring more about like, this is my design, like it, it better work to 
okay, it's less about my design. And like, as long as the store is successful, like that, yeah. that's the most important thing. Was there a moment in particular that that happened for you? I think when you first reviewed my store, you said like, check Amazon, make sure you're checking Amazon or Etsy. Just make sure you're looking at your designs. Cause there was, I think my designs that I made and you could clearly tell that's probably, it was just me making up designs that I thought were pretty cool. And uh, then after that video, I was like, yeah, let me just go on Amazon really quick. And then I just really made a mental note of what's selling. And I'm like, okay, I see. So then I started making more designs like that. And then the sales started coming in and I'm like, that's the formula to be, like, I, I'm getting it now. <laughs> so then I just like, I actually, I've redone my store like many times by now actually yeah when you reviewed my store I completely took everything off and we did all my designs simply of what the market research was and yeah started seeing sales like uh march the following month after the video like my store review was done i saw so much sales that that's when i it clicked in that's when i was like okay it's not about me nothing's personal do what, how the market is and then you will see success and the cha-ching noises makes it a lot easier to, <laughs> to yeah. Yeah. and so yes. was there as you like kept making these or actually i don't want to get ahead yet uh on our call when we got on you had already made like a bunch of changes that were like even like some stuff outside of what we mm -hmm. had recommended which i loved seeing that you had like i don't know if audacity is the right word but you had the confidence to like yeah. try out something different and it paid off big like what was it that like brought you to that conclusion like it was like the the mock-up like the lifestyle mock-ups that i'm thinking of Oh, just trying that out on the first store, like um, on the first review. Yeah, like when when we looked at your store, I was like, I would have never mm -hmm. guessed because I think it was like a particular mock up and like design style that basically you just gone back to like just buying a bunch of designs and it oh. sounded like you had really built up a really good process for just consistently adding new designs. Yeah, so um, I guess also something I learned in drop shipping and e commerce, you always want to compare yourself with your competitors and be a bit better, be one step ahead. So I yeah. actually just started looking at um, competitors, Amazon, Etsy, and then I looked on Etsy and that's where I saw my niche was actually doing really, really good. So then that's where I was yeah. like, okay, so this is where the market is for my niche. So I just started looking around there and just really absorbing what was doing really well. And I guess I stumbled on that you could buy designs on Etsy, that people actually sell it. And then when you read the description, it's for like commercial use. And I was like, I'm going to try that. Like I, I'm going to try it. So I actually spent like a good, like couple hundred on these designs and put them up. And like those designs became my best selling. Those were my best performing ads. And then that's what I learned that you can actually like just see what's designs that are trending. And then you could find them on Etsy from graphic designers who made it. So I was like, well, that's better than I can do on mid journey. So I was like, let yeah. me try this out. And yeah, they've become my best performing, um, designs and that's not to say that you need to buy but i've had some yeah. designs of mine that actually are like at the top best sellers as well and that's awesome because some people we talk to they go through like the course and like the content we put out is like just what's worked for us it's mm -hmm. it's certainly not the only way that this can work far from it and but we talk to some people who they're like i follow like step by step like they don't deviate outside of exactly what's laid out which like it's good to a point like Shopify store, just follow it. But like, I'm curious, what was it about like that design process that like, I maybe briefly touched on it in the course about it's possible to buy designs. I don't think I ever really went into, into detail. Yeah. You mentioned like, it's possible to buy designs, but it's best to make it. But I think that's uh, more so you said for cost wise, mm -hmm. but I was like, if I'm doing this, I'm going to invest into this. So, and just Great. seeing the cost of mid journey and everything and then seeing how much the designs cost, I'm like, why not? test it out. So yeah. when I did test out buying designs, I kind of have an eye for it now. And I actually see which designs, you know, a good deal be. when you see it now. Exactly a good <laughs> deal. I know how to get a good discount on these designs. And I know how to get these designs that I know will sell and they're actually becoming my best sellers. So I can tell now. So I guess I just like, don't be afraid to try it out. Like I actually steered away from the course a couple of times actually to try out different That's things great. on my own. And I feel like testing is the best way you got to also test don't be afraid to test new things like i actually test like you say to do 26.99 and do a sale but i was like what if i don't run a sale and i just had like 28.99 on my store and i had no sales and then i had these coupons like buy two get 
no, yeah, buy two, get 15% off, buy three. And I just tested it out for two months. And I was like, it was actually doing pretty good, but I went back. But I was like, it was just fun to test it out. Like, I feel like you got to, you know, steer away from the course sometimes as well. Like, don't be afraid to like test things out. Nothing's bad's going to happen. Yeah. It sounds like you, you almost viewed like testing things out in like a fun way. Yeah. Which is beautiful rather than it being like, this is my thing. Like it has to work. Like. It sounds like you're, correct me if I'm wrong, but like your overall mindset with things is that it's kind of like a game and like something you're building that's fun. And like a test is just like a fun next level of the game in a way. Exactly. I think once um, I got my store reviewed and I just knew like the base is good, I was like, well, now it's a playground. Now you could like really test new things out, try different mock-ups, try like, I just learned that I've been testing out lifestyle mock-ups. I know you say not to do them, but I just put out an ad and that was actually my best performing ad was a lifestyle mock-up. So I was like, it's good to test out, like nothing bad will happen. Cause like you can always reverse your store back if anything. Yeah. Like if I don't see any performance, I'm like, I can reverse it. But once I start testing it out, like I just see positive things all the time. Yeah. So I guess that just kind of motivated me to keep testing and trying new things. And I'm curious with that. I love that mindset. I'm curious how that mindset has fared with like, as we've introduced different ad strategies, like talking about Advantage Plus and like mm-hmm. versus the original course, which the way we tried to present it is like just different options. I'm curious, like how you approach that and like how you saw the different like options side by side. Yeah, I was like, why not? I turned off all my old ads because I was doing international. Mm-hmm. And um, I, w- I saw you guys were mentioning to do the Advantage Plus to US. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I don't know why, but I skipped that step. I started doing international, I think, way too early. So I actually just turned off all my old ads and just did the Advantage Plus. I think I'm on day 20 now. And it's been pretty fun seeing US <laughs> orders more than I've ever seen. So I'm like, well, that's nice for you know, the profit. So I, I do remember that when we when we got on your one on one call, I, was, I remember thinking, wow, she really, she really jumped right ahead to worldwide. Yeah. I was like, this is this is good. <laughs> she's, she's moving and grooving. And yeah, then I thought it was like a bigger market. So I was like, let me test it out, get more orders. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, I, I love, love your mindset around testing. And that you described it more eloquently than I ever have, which is that what we show in the course is just one possible answer key if you want to view it that way like there's a million different ways to do it and your mindset on testing viewing it as a fun playful like opportunity to grow your your baby in a different way Mm -hmm. like i think that's a great mindset and a lot of times myself included it's like if i have something that's working i don't want to i don't want to like nobody touch it (laughs) it's like (laughs) don't mess it up that kind of thing Mm -hmm. so i i think we can all learn learn from that but cool so fast forward a little bit further into like, so now you've been in the community for a little while now. I'm curious for what has been the thing in the community that you found the most helpful for is, is has it been like the support of other people seeing like the social aspect of other people doing it, the group coaching? Is there anything in particular that stands out? Oh, I think just everything, just seeing the engagement, seeing other people's stories and just seeing that everyone's at different like stages, which I really enjoy. So then we can all learn something from each other. I, I, I just think like this community is like the most amazing thing because I, like I, I've been in so many. So when I was thinking of joining into this one, I'm like, should I do it again? I mean, like, I feel like I've learned my lesson with the other 10 that I've been in. But I was like, you know, I'm going to try one last time. And this has been the best community. Like everybody, I just love seeing the engagement. Everybody's sharing. Like, I feel like people have become more open in this community because it is more like uh you know, there's uh, it's more closed off, I guess. You're not with the, so many people. Right. So you're just, everybody's not afraid to share, you know, like they're sharing more of their little secret sauce that they're doing. And I love to see that because I just feel like I'm an open book now. I'm like, I love to share everything that I'm doing. I'm like, like people private message me asking for help. And I just love telling them everything. I'm like, let me tell you everything. I'll share you screenshots, anything you want to see about my store. Like, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Like, I just think that it's so great that everybody's just helping each other everybody's at different stages and we're just all able to learn from each other. I think that's so great. And then just having access to coaches and being able to ask for help. Cause there is moments where you're just like, something happens, you know, like, what do I do? Like I had that <laughs> when I had a, such a big order. I'm like, what do I do now? Like, I, oh, right. I don't even know. What to do. I remember that so just being- <laughs> for anybody who's listening, Anita messaged me like a couple of weeks ago and said, Hey, I just got this really big order. Like, do you think it's legit? And I just said, uh, what I said to look, look up the address. And if it's is a it sketchy a warehouse, warehouse, then to cancel it. 
but you're like, it's a house. And I'm like, then we're good. <laughs> that it's a good order. <laughs> yeah. So that was just awesome. Cause I mean, there's moments in like business where you just, you don't know what to do. You're just kind of like stuck there. You're kind of looking around like, okay, what do I do? Who do I ask for help? And this community is just nice. Cause you can just ask for help and people are there and people reply pretty quick, which is actually really awesome. People are quick with it. People are there to give you help. And it's just, I think it's so awesome. And then just the pods, it's just, it gets better and better. So it's <laughs> really, really awesome. Well, and it's definitely a, a carry your own bags type of organization where the people who have the best experiences are oftentimes the ones who are putting the most into it. And it's kind of like a mirror mm -hmm. of yourself, like whatever you put out, kind of just like the world and whatever you put out into the world is normally like reflected back at you like 10 times over. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's no mistake that like you're having such a great experience is because of all the positivity, not just in the value and knowledge you contribute, but just your positive energy is so infectious in the best way possible. Um, and there it is. <laughs> yeah, again. Great. <laughs> that, that is a beautiful noise. And we'll, we'll let you get going to your cha-chings in just a second. But a uh, couple of last questions for you about, so for anybody who is going through that, uh, the quote unquote, rocky cutscene, going through the point where you are building your store, you're making your designs, and it just feels like day after, like Groundhog Day. And you, maybe you haven't gotten good result. Maybe you haven't even gotten your first sale yet, but mm -hmm. you have a vision in your mind and like, you know, you want to get there, but right now it's so hard to see a light at the end of the tunnel. What would be your message or, or thoughts to somebody who's in that spot? Ask for help. Honestly, that's like the best thing you could do. Cause when you, it may feel lonely when you're in this moment, I feel like people are afraid to ask for help, but honestly, it's the best thing you could do. Cause I just, I've been there where, and it just seems like, should I give up? Like, no, like ask for help and then somebody will help you. And just, yeah, I guess put your ego to the side because I've learned just don't take anything personally. Like people are there to help you and everything people are suggesting will help you get there. So I just feel like you will get there. Just don't give up and ask for help. And this community is like, what better place to ask for help? Because you just have like coaches and everybody there just so willing to help. So don't give up. Like it's it's going to get better. That's I've been there for yeah, do, sure. Do it, the, do it the Anita way. Ask for help. And, <laughs> and just the other thing you did very well was that you 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 took the feedback and then you applied it right away. Yeah. And you didn't, you like put yourself, which is a very challenging thing to do. Like you put yourself to the side and you're like, I'm doing this. Like I took the, I pushed for the feedback. I pushed my, I put myself out there. Now I'm going to make it worth it. And I'm going to directly apply all of it. And especially for you, like you said, like you had a lot of designs that like you, you made stuff that you thought was mm -hmm. cool and like put your heart into it, like we all do. Mm -hmm. And then to get the feedback of like, it's good stuff, but like, we should probably go in this direction for the market. I think it was remarkable, like the way that you were able to put yourself to the side and just go all out. I'm curious if any last piece of advice on that piece, like setting your ego to the side just to get the best result. If there's anything, obviously you had the drop shipping experience, which maybe gave you, I don't know, thicker skin might be the wrong word, but if there's any piece of advice you could give to somebody who like picture somebody who just made 50 designs, put their heart and soul into it. And then they get feedback from the community or whoever. And they say, that's not it. We should go in this direction, how they should handle that. I guess. Yeah. Just learn that the market, it's also about the market too. It's not personally about you. Like when somebody makes a feedback on your design, it's nothing to do with you and your artistic like design. It has nothing to do with that. It's truly the market. Once you learn how the market operates in the future, while you build your brand, you could definitely make your own designs. Like why they suggest, um, I think, to follow the market in the beginning a bit is you're building your brand. You want people to recognize, like notice you. That sounded really basically what you're saying is like not taking it what I think got you through it originally was hearing that it's not a reflection of yourself or the yeah. value that you have as a person in any way. It's just solely about, and like the skill that we're really building is not necessarily design creation and our artistry. That's a piece of it. Mm -hmm. But what we're really doing is the real skill is building, like reading the market and mm -hmm. identifying what people want and then closing the gap yes. and closing that gap. A piece of it is like the artistry, but it's doing the artistry in a very specific way. And it's when people just focus on that and like kind of head down on that. That's where when we pick our heads up, it's kind of like a, an awakening in a way. Yeah. But um, and so at 400 in sales and counting 401 sales now, which is amazing. 
looking out at the next six to 12 months, what does the future hold for Anita? What, what do you want to be doing? Where do you want the brand to be? What's your, your picture? Um, definitely seeing more green in the, my PL, PNL sheet, um, which I actually am seeing, like it's slowly going up, which is awesome, but I'd love to just, you know, do six figures. I think that's my next big goal. You know, I'm, I've definitely been doing more of the testing. I've tried out the twenty nine ninety nine on my store now. So hearing the ka-ching is actually very nice to hear that that's yeah, working nice. well. So yeah, just definitely keep going, adding more designs. I'm doing the seven day design challenge as well. So I'm just testing everything awesome. out and not just going with it, you know, and just seeing where it takes me. So yeah, I think building the brand and I also want to add more designs as well, like uh, more products, I was thinking. I want to try yeah. testing that out too. But yeah, just building a brand, getting those six figures, I think would be awesome. That would be so nice. I, I think you are you are well on your way. And not just because of the results that you've had so far, but what makes me even more confident that you're going to reach that is your mindset and how you're viewing it. All of it as number one, a learning experience. Mm -hmm. You're getting better every day. And number two, you're viewing it as a game and as something mm -hmm. that's fun and like beautiful and like very enjoyable. Not not to say, I'm sure, like for all of us, there's times where things are challenging, mm -hmm. but your overarching mindset is like, this is fun. And it, it comes off as like, you view it as like a privilege and like something mm -hmm. that you enjoy doing, which, you know, it's like a overused saying maybe, but like do something you love. You never work a day in your life. You very much seem to be embodying that. And it's it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Anita. I have personally taken a lot from this conversation. Hopefully everybody listening has as well. And thank you again for being such an awesome part of this community. Your positivity and not just the value, but also just your energy is, is really remarkable. We appreciate it. Thank so, you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. This was really fun. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks.